Hello, welcome back to Happy Little Diodes. We recently reviewed a thermal camera on the channel and it turns out thermal cameras are much like buses because another one has turned up. This time it's from a company called Thermal Master or Thermal Master depending where you're from and it claims to be the world's second smallest thermal camera. And to be fair, it is pretty small. Nifty. Along the way, I'm gonna make a few comparisons with the Top Don camera, which we looked at recently. And hopefully, if you're in the market for one of these things, this video will help you to decide which direction to go. There's a link in the description for more information and for where you can pick up one of these for yourself. All right, so here's the box showing our camera plugged into a mobile phone with a lovely picture of a ballerina on the front. You'll notice that it only supports Android. That is the case for the P2. There is a P2 Pro available, which seems to also have iOS support. The P2 Pro, by the way, is smaller and has a macro lens. Here is some information about the P2. Most interesting here is the 15 times digital zoom and what they call the Razer X AI image processing algorithm. We'll have a close look at what this can do and how it compares to other cameras on the market. Here's the box within the sleeve, has the company's logo on there, a little eye thingy. Let's have a look inside. All right, this is looking nicely packaged together, feels quite professional, high quality. There's an envelope here which contains a nice little card just saying thank you for buying a Thermal Master. That's a nice little touch. And of course, the quick start guide, which contains lots of instructions in lots of different languages. Inside the quick start guide, we'll have a look later. It has more specifications of the camera and a QR code to scan in order to download the Android app. By the way, there's only an Android app right now. The Windows app is still in development. Within this small cardboard box, there is a USB-C extension cable, so you don't have to have the camera plugged directly into your phone if you want to use it. And here's the nice little carry case that we saw in the intro. It's a lovely little thing with the company's logo on, and they even included a little carabiner so you can attach it to your keys or your toolbox. Within the case, we have the camera itself, the world's second smallest thermal camera. Interestingly, they also produced the world's smallest thermal camera, uh, which is claimed for their P2 Pro model, which is a little bit more expensive than this. And as I mentioned, has a macro lens. So here it is, it's extremely light, I have to say, it weighs basically nothing. Let's compare it to the Top Don TS001, which we looked at in a previous video, and you can see just how small it is. I thought the Top Don was small enough. This is about a third of the size of it. For me personally, these both fall into the category of small, and there's not much difference between them, but if you wanted something which was smaller than the Top Don, then the Thermal Master would be something to consider. Switching to our macro lens, let's have a close-up look at it. As you can see, not much to it, a small case, a camera lens, and a USB-C connector. Here's some more info on what the camera's capable of. The 256x192 resolution seems fairly standard, and the range goes all the way up to plus 600 degrees C. So I need to install the app. I'm going to scan this QR code, and it's going to direct me to an APK to download. I've installed it now, and here's what we get when we start up the app. A little bit of precursory info on how to use the app and how to get around. Let's have a quick scan through these and then we can plug the camera in and have a go with it. The USB-C connector is long enough to plug in without me having to remove my phone from its case, which is a nice touch. And ooh, it's trying to launch into one of the two thermal imaging apps I have. So I'm going to choose the Thermal Master one. And there we are, we can see the camera is connected and I need to give it some permissions to use camera and take images and edit files, etc. obviously. So I've done that now. And there we are, we're in it. There's me. It's defaulted to a black and white color scheme. We'll go through all of them later. And what else can we play with on this screen? Well, there's a temperature range at the top. It seems to have two specific temperature ranges, one for let's call it low temperature and one for high temperature and an auto mode. We'll try the auto mode out later. And here we can see the digital zoom which the other camera I've used doesn't seem to have. That's a nice touch. This X button is for the HD AI optimized image processing algorithm, which we'll look at in some more detail later on. We can also add points and lines for measurement points. We can choose our color scheme. I'm just gonna stick with this 
what I would say is a normal color scheme for a thermal camera. And you can have picture in picture, which you can set an opacity to, and you can enlarge to roughly match up with the image from the thermal camera. We've also got some basic stuff like brightness and contrast, mirroring and rotation. And in the middle, we can click the camera here in order to take pictures or record videos. Once you give it permission, there we are. There's my first picture right up my nose. So I'm going to play with it now. Here's my cup of tea and I've added a measurement point. What it doesn't do by default is highlight the hottest point in the image, uh, which may or may not be a problem for you. Doesn't, it's not a problem for me. So my cup of tea, or at least my mug is about 43 degrees right now. I can see the reflection of it in the desk and notice how the picture is so smooth. It almost looks like a cell shaded kind of computer game. This is the AI image processing algorithm, which is kind of cool, I think. I think it makes it look really nice. I also noticed when I was messing around with it that I can see where the pipes go under my floorboards. I've not used a thermal camera with a heating on yet because I've only had one in the summer, but that's really useful. It explains why my cat always sits somewhere along that line on the landing. Closing in on the cup of tea, the close-up performance on this lens, it's not a macro lens, isn't the best, but that's just not what it was built for. We'll look at that in more detail soon. I'm just showing you how smooth this picture looks with the AI image algorithm. There are a few more software features and settings we'll have a look at, but for now, let's go through some use cases. I know a lot of you are into your electronics and repair and the like, so let's have a look at a ZX Spectrum. This is one which was donated to the channel recently. Thanks for that. As you can see, it's broken. And although I wouldn't be reaching straight for the thermal camera for this failure mode, let's do it anyway and take a look. It's not drawing too much current, so I'm not going to cause any damage. First of all, I'm going to use the Thermal Master and just notice how close I can get to this thing and still have a good amount of the device in the picture. So I can see all of the lower RAM chips there and I don't really need to stand up too high or raise it too high in order to see the entire board. Just a foot or two away is fine and that's really convenient actually. By the way, look how shiny and reflective the heatsink looks on the thermal camera, that's interesting. As expected, the, the voltage regulator, the Z80 and the ULA are heating up. Nothing unusual there. As I get very close, we lose focus. But as I mentioned, this isn't a macro lens. If you wanted that performance and you were going to go with Thermal Master, I would recommend going for the P2 Pro or the third offering, which is the TS2 Pro, which has an adjustable eight millimeter macro lens. So I would definitely be reaching for this camera if I wanted to take a look at an entire computer board, looking for hotspots and enjoying this nice smooth picture, which I assume is just an interpolation algorithm. There's no new information there when you switch on HD. It just makes the picture look a lot smoother and a lot nicer to use. Again, zooming in up close, we lose focus. And I'm going to show you now what a macro lens can do in this situation. So I've plugged in the topped on TS001 and I've zoomed right up to the ULA, fiddled the focus knob and you could see the detail was all there. However, if I want the whole board in the picture, look how high I have to hold it. I'm stood up and I'm reaching the phone way up above my head and I can just about get the whole board in. Obviously this is less convenient, but each camera has its own pros and cons. One such pro of the topped on is it has a focus ring uh, a con is that you have to keep adjusting the focus ring while you're using it, which is a little bit of extra effort, but that's all. In the end, you get this nice close-up macro picture. So what about the HD algorithm? I want to do a comparison here. This is the Thermal Master P2 versus the Top Don when I'm trying to get the whole board in. You can see that the algorithm is doing wonders on the left-hand side. It looks a lot more smooth. Although there isn't extra information in the picture, it's just nicer to look at and nicer to use. Okay, let's have a look at some more settings. You can have a watermark on your images, which just says Thermal Master. You can have a time display as well, showing the date and time of the picture. There is a burn protection mode, which will warn you if the temperatures are getting too hot and tell you to take the camera away. You can set your own temperature alarms for high and low temperature, which will give a audible warning and a vibration if the temperatures are exceeded. There's some more advanced stuff here with emissivity, which is beyond me. Other than that, we just have some language options and some help. 
if you want to compare your device info with mine, here it is. This is the one that I was sent. All right, another use case, possibly the most important one, cats. With the Thermal Master P2, I can just point it at my cat. I don't need to be miles away from it, and I don't need to be adjusting the focus ring in order to get a picture which is in focus. I can be so close to her that I can even give her a fuss while I'm filming. Hey, look, you can see her footprints, that's cool. By means of comparison, here's the top done, and I need to stand much further back, meters back, and manually focus the camera in order to get her into the picture. But once she's in it, you get a nice macro image, which is, I think, a nice picture overall, even if it doesn't have the HD smoothing algorithm. It is more difficult to keep following cat around with this camera though, because I need to keep manually adjusting the focus. Here we go again with the Thermal Master, chasing her around the kitchen. And here's the digital zoom. I've zoomed in 15 times here and the picture switching the HD mode on and off is wildly different thanks to the interpolation of the image algorithm. Here we are back on again. You can see it really does make a big difference. In fact, let's put the two images side by side, one with the HD off and one with the HD on. And you can see that it does look much nicer and is much nicer to use. In my opinion, the HD mode is most effective with distant objects or if you're using the digital zoom. Here's me on selfie mode and I'm just turning the HD on and off and it's kind of hard to tell when it's on and when it's off. When it is on, it just all looks a bit smoother and a bit less realistic, but not so much that I would bother to switch it on or off depending on the use case. I would certainly leave the HD mode on the entire time. Okay, here's another use case. If you want to film your house with your thermal camera, you need to go outside and point the camera at your house. So here's a Thermal Master P2. That's how far back I needed to stand in order to get the whole house in the shot. If I want to get the house and the garage in the shot, I needed to go back just a few more steps to this far out. My neighbors are wondering what I'm doing at this point. And there's my whole house. And that's quite useful. I think people want to use their thermal cameras to see where the house might be losing heat. Now with a macro lens, in this case a top done, if I stand here and use that camera, I'm definitely not going to get the whole house in the shot. Once I've focused it, there you go, I've just got a few windows in the shot, so I needed to walk further back. Now this isn't a bad thing, this is just a characteristic of the macro lens, so if you were thinking of buying a camera for the purpose of looking at your own house, then you might want to consider getting a P2 over a P2 Pro or a top done TS001. And standing all the way back, almost on the neighbor's drive, I still couldn't get the whole house and the garage in, although the picture I think was fine. Okay, actual use cases aside, here's a nice thing about USB-C, and I guess it's true for iOS cameras as well. You can unplug it and plug it in any way you like. So I'm gonna flip it around to selfie mode here so I can show you the various color schemes which are available in the Thermal Master software. In fact, let's use them to paint an Andy Warhol style painting. I'm going to cycle through them all. So we've got white hot, black hot, standard iron red, red hot. I don't know what this one's called. It's kind of multicolored. We've got a bluey red one and a slightly lighter blue red one. This one I'm going to call the matrix. We've got this orangey one. I think they call this one lava. And then this one, which is just wild. And I'm going to paint my own face using temperature here. There we are, lovely. So lots of options there. A couple of strange things happened while I was testing. One thing, I had this bug where the camera kind of flashed and burned an image on, which didn't go away. I think this is a bug and something that Thermal Master might want to look into. I had to unplug the camera and plug it back in again to get it to behave itself again. Secondly, I wanted to try the auto temperature range, so I pointed it at my soldering iron as it heated up on auto, and the temperature got stuck at 203.4 degrees C. It was only when I manually changed the temperature range to the higher temperature range did it catch up and get up to around about 300, which is what I had the iron set to. In fact, let's bring the iron a little bit closer and see if we can get a reading which is a bit closer to what I set the iron to, which was 350 and the tip is getting up to about 320. I don't know where that disparity comes in. Maybe I need to change some emissivity values or maybe it's a problem with my soldering iron. Anyway, I'm going to put it back in its case now, ready for when I actually need to use it in anger. 
I hope that was useful and has helped you make a decision regarding which way you want to go with buying your own thermal camera. I want to say thanks to Thermal Master for sending me this and remind you there's a link in the description for more information on this product. And if Thermal Master want me to help with anything else with their products, I'm more than happy to. Maybe you need a new model. Thanks everyone for watching and I'll see you in the next video.